All right, guys, here we go. Here is the answers for this week's review packet. Make sure you've done it before you watch the video. Homophones. This is a picture of steel. S-T-E-E-L. Metal. The frog is walking on the floor. That is creek. Creek. In math, we learned about the commutative principle. It's this one because Dr. King, the person, is a pal. Principal is the principle of a school. That one always means person. This one always means rule. Principle, P-L-E. Bread is made from a mixture called dough. D-O-U-G-H. The other is a female deer. This section is punctuation for dialogue speaking in a book. We have to use punctuation in dialogue in a special way. Always quotation marks before and after what the person says. And there has to be a separator between the tag, who said it, and what they said. What happens to illegally parked frogs? Sylvia asked. She asked a question, so I put the question mark with what she said. Close quotation marks. Period here. Todd knew the answer and replied immediately. They get towed. The person is at the front, so we use a comma as a separator. Quotation marks around what was spoken. And since this is a joke, maybe an exclamation point. In close quotation marks. They get towed, T-O-W-E-D. Ursula explained to Van. This will be a comma. It's not a question and she's not super excited, so instead of a period here, we'll change it to a comma. We don't ever use periods in dialogue punctuation in the middle of the sentence. We do add the question mark or the exclamation point and a period at the end. Next section is commas. Now these commas in this part are around an address. We're not working on a list of things. You can find Mr. Jenkins at the new company headquarters located at 10077 Rimrock Boulevard, comma, Flagstaff, comma, Arizona, 73621. When written as a sentence, we separate the street name from the city from the state. Verb tense. Does this happen in the past, present, or future? We will notify you of the test results. Will notify is the verb. And anytime we say we will do something, it means we haven't done it yet. So that's in the future. Fact or opinion. Swimming and diving should be taught in school. Well, as soon as you say should, I know it's an opinion. Swimming and diving are Olympic events. I can prove that, so it makes it a fact. Possessives. That means that it's a way that we show ownership when we write. We have teachers. This is plural. Teacher apostrophe S. This is one teacher, singular, who owns something possessive. Teachers apostrophe. This is lots of teachers, so plural, own something possessive. Plural possessive. More than one teacher owns it. Only one teacher owns it. This just means a lot of teachers. So let's look at the sentences. 
some of my teachers got together and bought a sailboat. Well, the teachers are not owning anything in the next word. When you show possession, when you write, it's usually right after the noun. Some of my teachers got together and bought a sailboat. Some teachers did something. That means we just use plural. T-E-A-C-H-E-R-S. No apostrophe. We just mean a bunch of teachers. The teacher's sailboat is called the teacher's lounge. Now this right here gives me a clue as to how I should write it. How many teachers own this sailboat? Well, we know it's more than one because some of them bought it. So I'm going to use teachers, plural, and add the ownership mark, which is an apostrophe. I see my favorite teacher. Well, you're only allowed to have one favorite, so I know that I have to use singular plural. Teacher apostrophe S. If the apostrophe is before the S, then it is singular because that me that word in front of the apostrophe means just one. Contractions. They want you to take these two words and make a contraction out of them. I had better get to sleep or I will be sleepy tomorrow. I had turns into I apostrophe D. I'd better get to sleep or I'll be sleepy tomorrow. Adjective or adverb? Adverb tells about a verb. Adjective tells about a noun. Adverbs usually end in L-Y and tell how I can do that action. Quickly, slowly, quietly, humbly. This is a very blank sea creature. Well, there's no action in this sentence. This is just a being verb. So there's no action. And it's telling me about the sea creature. Sea creature is a noun. So I would say odd. This is a very odd sea creature. Adjective. Its weird colors change oddly and instantly. Change is a verb. Oddly tells how they change. Instantly tells how they change. Root words, also called cheese words. Mama doesn't mind if you eat a cheese sandwich because cheese has calcium and protein in it. The root word, I kind of like to say, is the cheese word because it's the part of the word that holds the most meaning. In the, the root word in certainly, only is a suffix, and uncertain, un is a prefix, is what? Root word is the part of the word with the most meaning. So our root word is certain. Last question. Prefixes and suffixes. Mom said you could reheat your dinner in the blank. Well, refrigerators make things cold. Cabinets just keep me from being able to see it. Microwaves make things warm. So I'll have to choose microwave. The prefix re, when added to heat, wrote, finish, or count, means blank. Well, reheat rewrote, refinish, or recount. Re means again. You're going to reheat it, heat it again. Rewrite it, write it again. Refinish it, finish it again. Or recount it, count it again. Hope you got them all right.